Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Which is focused on emerging challenges of business world, organized by Balaji Institute of Modern Management. It's been an enriching journey so far, with serious insights on the Internet of Things, VUCA world, work-life balance, the usage of Kaizen, liquid workforce, the impact of Brexit, orange world, and more. I, Utpala Ghosh, and I, Joyful Lobo, are proud to be your Masters of Ceremony for today's afternoon session. Success comes to those who toil and work hard while others sleep. With these words, let us march on and call our next speaker, Mr. Bursin Vakil, Head of Marketing, Red Hat. May I now request Dr. G. Gopala Krishnan, Director, Balaji Institute of Management and Human Resource Development, to felicitate our guest with a bouquet. I request student manager Pushpita Datta to introduce our guest. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I, Pushpita Datta, student manager, Balaji Institute of Modern Management, feel very excited to have been bestowed with the opportunity of introducing our guest speaker, Burzeen S. Vakil. Mr. Burzeen heads the India marketing function at Red Hat India the world's leading provider of open source solutions. A marketing professional with about 15 years of rich industry experience, he has worked across industry managing diverse portfolios. Earlier in his career, Mr. Burzin has worked with highly regarded company like IBM, where his tenure at IBM won him over 18 awards, and in 2011, he was selected for the prestigious Worldwide Leadership Development Program, where his team went on to win the best strategic project. Prior to IBM, he worked at Air Deccan with the team that redefined aviation in India. Mr. Burzin started his career as a sales officer at Titan Industries, where his responsibilities included channel sales and distribution. He loves to share ideas and spends a lot of time over the weekends at various management institutes sharing emerging trends and practices in marketing. He also works with corporate leaders in crafting motivation and management concepts. Mr. Burzin is an alumnus of Xavier's Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship and is based in Bangalore. Without further ado, please help me in welcoming Mr. Burzin S. Fakir. Sir, please. Good afternoon, wow. I must admit, and uh, uh, yeah, that I have never seen an impressive gathering uh, over decades of me visiting various management institutes. Yeah. I can come in front, yeah. And a better welcome with your ovation and I hope to stand to your expectations uh, as I give it my best shot. Now, when I was invited uh, to spend about an hour with you, a lot of thoughts started creeping into my mind. What should I speak about? And sometimes the topics that get crafted and edged in stone uh, often kind of deviate what really is the essence and what is it exactly that my audience wants to hear, all right? So crafting and keeping that in mind I have put a few sets of films, movies, music, but most importantly, the first lesson that I leave with you as you step out into the corporate world, that is not your presentation. The individual standing here, the presenter, is your presentation. Because what you present to the corporate, to the industry, is what you create. If you present what someone else has created, then that is beer an articulation of someone else's idea. Now with that, I understand that this is the third day, the final session, and uh, I know a lot of you sitting here waiting for the clock to strike five, six, seven, when you could get back, move a little. So why don't I request all of you to take a pledge with me? 
And why don't all of you stand up for a few seconds? All right? So let's pledge, let's pledge that over the next hour or so, I will not touch my mobile phone. Over the next hour or so, I will give WhatsApp a little bit of rest. And if you like what I show you, you will give me a hand of applause. All right. Now, I, I ascertain three things. A, that you all are not tied to your chairs for three days and you all are able to move. B, you all are able to raise your hand because I will be doing a lot of polling. And C, you all have a loud voice. So if you have a question and you have a query, shout it out because that's what we want in the industry, to hear those queries and to hear those subjects. You can all sit down, and I love the power I have, but uh, take your seat. All right, so let's get started. And what you see, what you really see on the first slide over here is a very nice lady, a fruit vendor, who has uh, some lovely mangoes and a good host of fruits. What do you see in this picture? Come on, let's have a quick round. Someone just jumping up. She's smiling, she's happy, why? She's satisfied, what else? She's enjoying her work, lovely, I love you guys. Come on, what else? She's got a good produce, yeah? The mangoes look fresh. She knows that she's gonna sell them. She knows that she's gonna get good money for it. She feels confident that the work she put in either planting them or acquiring them from a supplier is going to pay off. She knows it's a bright day ahead. Do you agree? Yes. Hold that agreement and hold that thought as I move on to our next exhibit. What do you see here? And this is something all of you have done. You have all bought a mobile phone. OLX, wow. But have you all bought a mobile phone on your own? You all have stolen one? Okay, but what it really says is that all of you all at some point of time, either with money of your own or maybe from your parents or wherever, have bought a mobile phone or have bought a product and service. And when you buy that product and service, what is it that you look for when you open the wrapper? You look for that product and service to deliver what was advertised. You look for that product and service to give you the benefit and the excitement that the features that once upon a time attracted you, and you need it to start then. You cannot have a mobile phone, or you cannot have a product and service, which you're so eager to open that you did not even want to buy it online, or you rather went and you know, just bought it the first time it came into the market, and then someone tells you that you need to wait for one week till it gets activated. Remember the day when you bought your first motorcycle? If someone told you it's not registered in time and you have to wait for a month, how demotivating would that be? You want to rev it. Or the old cars, which you know people bought and had governor systems with them, I think it's way beyond your generation. But people said you can't drive above 40 kilometers an hour. And you've got a new car, roads were open, you had exciting people sitting either behind you or next to you, and you can't do that. Now that feels a lot let down, does it? It does. So park this thought, and maybe you all can park it for a while, as I move on to my next slide. And my presentation today is all about analogies. My presentation today is to leave certain messages with you that you will not find in the so-called curriculum, you will not find in some of the speakers who articulate the importance of changing technology and changing industry. But these are nuances for every individual sitting in this room to abide by, to imbibe these qualities because they are the qualities that will make the difference when you stand peer to peer with students and colleagues from various institutes across the globe. So what I've showed you in analogy one and what I've showed you in analogy two is no different than what life at a corporate is. We also want students. We want the best. And just like the lady over there who has a set of mangoes, some ripe, some raw, and when the buyer comes, he's gonna feel it, right? He's gonna smell it. And he's gonna predict that this mango is gonna come without worms. This mango, is going to give me the satisfaction that I bought it or paid the premium for. You agree? Yes. You also need to know that when you buy that mango, you thought that I will have that mango for dinner. Right? And you said, Correct? Now, the same thing is what the expectation the industry has from people 
sitting in this auditorium. We want you to fire from day one. And you may ask me, or your colleagues may ask me, but what, I don't understand it. I know you don't understand it, but I need you to start understanding. I need you to start understanding and delivering almost at the same time. And that's the expectations that we bring. We also want you to add value, right? Because your phone had so many features, imagine if some of those features didn't function. We bought it because they were promised. Is that not right? It is. And therefore, the promise that you carry when you sit for those interviews is never say that I want to come to your organization and I want learning experience. I want to step into your organization because you know, I need to you know, roll up my sleeves, get my hand dirty, and I want to learn. The time for learning is over. No organization, just like not, not you and not someone who bought those mangoes or the phone, will pay money back to you as you are a cost to the company to tell you that, okay, come and learn from me. Not in this competitive world. I don't know what the future holds, but definitely not in this competitive world. Ingrain these thoughts in your mind. They are simple thoughts, but that's the expectation. I leave you with the first expectation. But what I also leave with you, my dear colleagues, is when management looks at employees, they look at maximizing the human capital. They want the best value for the money that they invest in you. They also want motivated employees. Motivation is one of the fundamental differentiators from good to great. They want motivational employees to come, to contribute, and to make their business successful. And they want employees that are willing, that are capable, that are able to work. Now let's flip the side and look at the other side of the triangle. What do employees want from corporates? They want to know that they fit into that culture, they fit into that organization, and they like to feel respected. We all like to feel respected. Don't you like to feel respected? Of course you do. They also want to be valued, right? And that's your expectation. Now you see the difference between the two? You want to be valued and you want to be said, he is important to me. And you also want to contribute. We all want to contribute. We don't want to just sit there and say, you know, my pay will come at the 30th day of every month. None of us want that, yeah? We don't enjoy that. And even if we enjoy it for a little bit, at some point of time, we know that it differentiates us. The cream always rises to the top, all right? And therefore, if you get a symbiotic relationship between what the employer wants and what the uh, employee wants, and then you chalk out the marks of one, two, three, four, you have someone He's recognized and valued by the business, that serves your purpose. If he's valued by the business, you move over again, and you're very motivated. You like to go to work, you want to do a lot more. You've all experienced this. This is nothing new. This is nothing that you've not experienced. It's from the time you were in school, from the time you were in your PUC or SSC, depending on the state you passed out from, it's the time you came to your MBA or wrote your competitive exams. It's the time you stood, you're waiting for your CGPA or your marks that came out and, and flashed before you, right? And motivated employees contribute a lot more. And contributing a lot more, the company wins by maximizing human value. Very simple logics. Two different ideologies, two different us. But when you merge it, it's a win-win for everyone. And keep the second message I leave with you. Always look for a win-win situation. If you win and someone lose it, loses it, that's a battle. All right? In a battle, nobody wins. Everyone loses someone. All right? So let me ask you this question and ask you this question twice. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Yes, Are you really ready? Yes, sir. Then I leave you with seven little nuggets from my presentation today. And these seven nuggets is what I want you to capture. So when you get out of this institute, and what a beautiful institute, and you pack your bags for your first day in college, pack seven little things that I leave with you today. And these seven things you will not find. You know it. It is there somewhere in your subconscious. But it matters in the corporate ladder. It matters so much that people will never tell you. Managers will never prescribe it to you. Leaders will never you know, articulate it to you. But they are looking for it when you step in. And they're looking for it with you. And I leave you with the first, which is change. Now, I was tempted to put this as the seventh essential. All right? But I thought a little different when I was driving back with your lovely colleagues who are unbelievably hospitable, and I said, let me start with change. And change is important because we all come from diverse backgrounds. We come from a variety of academic uh, degrees and institutions, some a little higher, some a little lower, some a little diverse. But when we need to change and adopt 
and accept the need of what the industry is or the corporate is, you have to really unlearn a lot of things. You have grown in a certain society, you have grown in a certain state, you have grown with certain ideologies that come and grow into you. But for people to be successful, you have to adopt, adapt, learn the better practices, and sometimes let go of some things that's limiting you. What I wanted to leave with you was about change. Uh, if we are able to solve the video, and I know your colleagues are working at the back end, uh, we will show you this brilliant video that was captured by the National Geographic, right? But nevertheless, I'll move into my second topic, which is optimism and ideas. Now, nobody in the industry, nobody in any walk of life, nobody likes someone who says things cannot happen. People love to hear people say, I can do it. I can make it happen. And I will make it happen. And this is one thing that you should carry with you as you pack your little suitcase in getting back to the industry. An optimistic mind is something that the industry craves for. People crave for people to bring in ideas to the table. They want to hear more. They want the cliche term of think outside the box. They want to hear new models. I'll give you a little story. Decades back, there were two shoe companies. They both sent their little salespeople to a little city in Africa. And they said that I want you to do market research here. And I want you to set up an entire practice of distribution. The first guy reached, he was very excited. In those days, going abroad was not easy. In those days, getting into an aircraft was something that was aspirational. So he reaches there, and to his surprise, he looks at everyone, either barefooted or with little slippers. And he calls back his manager and says, my manager, you have cheated me. How am I ever going to sell a single pair of shoes to a country that's never seen it? This is just not possible. I need to come back. I just cannot work here. Then nobody understands what a shoe is. And the second guy calls his manager and says, I don't know what you saw in me, but you have blessed me with the largest opportunity. I see a gold mine. I see a 100% market share of this first being the first entrant over here to come and sell shoes. And I quote Winston Churchill's famous quote, that a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity but an optimist looks for the opportunity in every difficulty. Bring your optimism when you come to work. Bring your optimism every morning when you wake up and take it back with you because you need to bring it back the next day. That's my second nugget to leave with you as you groom and pack your bags. The third, and a lot of people misunderstand by a lot of quotes in the industry talking about aptitude is the best thing that gives you altitude, or, you know, it's your attitude that counts. Be very clear. Be very clear, regardless of the brand that you come from, it's the right attitude. It's the right attitude that will take you places. It's the can-do attitude. It's the yes, let me try it attitude that is more important than just attitude. Because nobody wants you to bring, because of real estate constraints, so to speak, a lot of baggage when you come to the companies. Take this as your third nugget and as you think about it today. How many of you all have grown up playing passing the parcel? Wow, look at those hands. How many of you all enjoyed this game? What used to happen? When the music stopped and the parcel reached someone, that person was out. And some of us got very happy with that, right? <laughs> he says, mera chance aagya, mera number aur upar ho gaya. You know the reality? This game is still played in our lives. This game still continues to be in corporates. This game continues to be as you go higher up the ladder. It's not the ball, it's the responsibility that is thrown and passed around. If you like this nugget, now is the time to clap your hands. <laughs> don't, don't pass your responsibility. And as organizations grow larger, they adopt something known as a matrix organization where you really don't have an immediate superior to question you. It is that department didn't give it to me. That, that person is delaying it. I have done my work. I have done it, boss. I have done it yesterday. I have not read it in his inbox. I have not read it. I have not read it. This is what goes on. Never do it. Never do it because although you've done your work, if you don't get and take responsibility, if you don't take ownership in what you do, if you don't, you don't collaborate, 
you are harming yourselves. Now let me talk about a subtle difference between teamwork and collaboration. And I apologize because I had a brilliant another video coming up, but I don't know if they'll be able to fix it in time. But ownership is very different from participation. Ownership is about involvement. It is saying that I take charge, and many of you may be doing it in the projects and the teams and the internships and the corporate social assignments that you'll do even today. Somebody takes charge. And some of you are happy that somebody else is taking charge because it doesn't come as a load to you. Change that behavior. Go back to my first nugget. Change that behavior. Because ownership and collaboration is something that's never written, but something that's always sought. I don't know if this video will play. It's not playing. Anyway, we'll move to the fifth nugget, which is believe in yourself. A very, very important nugget, right? And if you look at the industry and business models today, it is about the belief that certain individuals had that changed the entire landscape of how work and how production and how marketing and how finance works today. You've heard of the success of Uber? Have you all used Uber? You can say it, I can hear you. Yes. Of course. Does Uber own a single vehicle? No. Why? It can't afford it? It can. It can afford an entire fleet of vehicles, but the business model changed. Have you all used Swiggy? Yes. You all order a lot of food from Swiggy? Yes. That business model sought the idea of one individual who said, Delivery and logistics is the next big game changer. All right? Have you all heard about Airbnb or Oyo Homes a little more relevant? Yes. Do they own a single property? Then what do they do? Adcoms, yeah? 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 But today you can use that franchise. Have you heard of Alibaba and Flipkart? Of course you have. All right? Do they have warehouses of their own? Why? Flipkart has a warehouse. Okay, what about Alibaba? He has a few servers, all right? And 10 years back, I heard an interview at a World Economic Forum recently where uh, Jack Ma was, you know, articulating his success story. And he said at about 10 years back, he met someone from Walmart, and that person said, if you want to grow and have 10,000 or 20,000 customers, you need warehouses, you need logistics, you need companies, you need finances. And he said, no, I need two servers. You see, the entire landscape changed overnight, and that is because the belief of an individual. I again have to apologize to you because I brought you a phenomenal video that once shook the world. It's working? All right, come on, let's put it on. How did you get it? How do you know it's working? Yeah. I hope it works. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's go back to the first videos. All right. Yeah. I think so. All right, we are good to go. So I'm gonna recap quickly. We saw what this lady did. We saw what you did with your products and services. We said the corporate world is exactly the way you buy, sell, and services today. The house is now open for questions. Yeah. Hello, sir. So to your right. Sorry. Hi. Hello, sir. So I'm Arjun from Operations and Supply Chain Batch. Yes. So my question is that this open source OS, like uh, let's say Red Hat and Ubuntu, for example, they're not much into uh, the individual users, but they're into so much into corporate and B B2B businesses. Yes. So, and it is very much useful there than it is in individual. Yes. So my question is that while it is as per my experience, it is way much better than Windows, but just that we have to do little more work than in Windows, what we do in Windows. So is there any uh, like campaign or future plans to pitch in for the individual users? You've done your reading well, right? <laughs> no, sir, I actually <laughs> use and I used to do Lovely. ethical hacking earlier. Yeah. So, so we work, uh, so Red, as many of you 
may know, may not know. Uh, it is built on the ideologies of open source. And open source is nothing but people work in communities, virtual projects, and there could be anyone with an intellectual mind sitting anywhere in the world. It could be in Europe, in US, not bound by the badge of the organization that he carries, contributing code and technology into that project, all right? So the development is much faster. You get beautiful people putting in what they want to do. Now, there are versions in the consumer flavor. We call it Fedora. Uh, we use it at our organization, but as a business strategy, we are not in the consumer industry as of now, but we are in the enterprise industry. Now, what you should really understand is the open source world is completely changing, right? And it's changing because it is technologies, it is consumers who are defining the consumption. How many of you use an Android today? I should have asked how many of you don't use an Android today. Android is open source, right? It is open source. It is the change the way the world has done. It is a completely new ideology that's coming. You have middleware, the little apps that are created, and so on and so forth. So it is built on an open source, and then organizations such as Red Hat, we also put in thousands of engineers to build and develop that code, and then take like a balance sheet, a snapshot, or a version of that, and then we make it enterprise ready, and then we take it into the market, and we don't sell it, because open source as an ideology cannot be sold, but we give it to enterprises, and then charge them a subscription, all right? Now, we did this since 25 years, right? But if you look at all the major IT players today, information technology, all right? Everyone's moving to this model of subscription. All my friends, and I have only friends in the open source world, are all moving to this. Nobody really buys licenses anymore, yeah? But as a business decision, we are in the enterprise space and in the large, large enterprise space. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't have any more movies, but if not, feel free to reach out. Uh, as I said, uh, I love to, to speak. I, I visit a lot of management institutes, and when I have time traveling across the globe, I try to delve and learn, uh, because every time you step into the temple of knowledge, you definitely learn something. I learned something today as well, and uh, learning is, of course, a continuous process. So thank you, and I hope I've been of some use. And connect with me via LinkedIn. You have a query, drop it in. Uh, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing because someday some of you may be very big people, and I will say I have them in my LinkedIn list. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was inspirational, Excellent. motivating, Excellent. and filled us all with energy, just what we needed. We've learned a lot from the stories, videos, and anecdotes you shared with us. The seven nuggets you shared with us will take us a long way in our corporate careers. May I now request Dr. K.K. Veluri, Director, Balaji Institute of Telecom Management, to present our guest with a memento. <laughs>